hope summer is treating you well and you're treating you well with lots of rest and ice cream and soaking up all the sun and good vibes. Welcome back to another video slash yummy food explosion on your screens slash passionate emotional rant from me. I wanted to start off by saying I love you guys probably too much. The amount of brain capacity you guys take up, a little creepy. Just to serve. Here. Oh, hi. Eat the antenna, man. Hi. Great. You guys are my first thought in the morning and the last people I would want to disappoint. Which sucks a little because I've found I can't be what all of you want me to be. I see all of you as human beings with feelings and stories and think you're literally the coolest, strongest people ever. And sometimes I think people forget that I'm also a human with feelings and a story who's really not that cool and extremely socially awkward and sometimes not that strong. Sticks and stones will break your bones, but words will never hurt you, they said. No, actually, I'd rather you chuck sticks and pelt me down with a couple boulders because I swear it would hurt less and the healing would be easier. A video about confidence, I'm too restrictive. A video about gaining weight, I'm just lazy. A video about losing weight for me, now I'm too triggering. I posted a video about finally being happy and people just think I'm lying about being happy. Comfort food, oh, being always makes me happy. I missed you being- I know, I know. You're just too sensitive. It's part of the job. They don't actually know you. You signed up for it. You'll get used to it. Look, I'll just need a video that I'll have no hate in it. Me when? I don't care. I'm just boring people. That's not what it's about. It doesn't bother me. It just, like, makes me tired. I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm just I just hate that like Hokang happy idea. I can't keep running away just because I get hate. If I could I change your world. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I lost momentum on YouTube around the same time last year. Momentum as in the part of me that, that was excited to create, that wanted to get up and grab her camera up until Greg Doucette posted that video of me. And I was not ready to receive. Uh, I guess no one really is ever ready to receive that kind of hate. It's really cool to film yourself and edit and create a story and something that I've always loved to do. Did I ever think I could make a job out of it? No way <laughs> but with that comes a lot of pressure comparison analytics and it becomes part of my worth and a fear because once you have something you're just scared to lose it what's my backup plan you know what I mean? and when i get hate it's jabbing at the wound that i'm not gonna have this forever and i don't have a backup plan i love this opportunity and but then why does it like hurt so badly i'm a very emotional person as you can tell I have a lot to work on. I'm going to keep making mistakes. I can't expect myself to be perfect. I don't know what people want from me. I guess I really should be asking myself, do I want what's going to make me happy? It's hard to focus on that when the whole point is to make you guys happy. But I can't do that if I'm not happy. And I have to take care of myself. It's just annoying because like I thought that's what I've been doing for the past year. I guess that wasn't enough time. I don't know what to think and I don't know how to keep going. I don't, I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like, who do you want me to be? What version of me will make you happiest? What do I have to look like and eat like to finally just be accepted? So I decided I'm only going to eat healthy. Yep, I officially don't eat anything bad for me. Every morning I eat a filling high protein breakfast. Today we are trying something. I've always wanted to try and I've always found kind of disgusting. We love protein and we love cereal. Protein powder. Honestly, it doesn't look bad. It's like everything I love in a bowl. It's really good. <laughs> Yay! Makes it almost taste like a milkshake. I only eat at very specific times. I'm very strict with this one. Only when I'm hungry or walk by a gelato store, or I will never eat at any hour that's not between 6 a.m. and 5.59 a.m. I only eat good foods, like broccoli, spinach, chicken breasts, spoonfuls and spoonfuls of peanut butters, Oreos, pancakes, cookies, donuts. As I said, only the good foods. I only eat healthy so I can look good, which means fueled for my workouts, because I personally think I look really good when I'm sweating and working on myself. And when I'm eating all my favorite foods. 
America's food freedom. It looks pretty good on me, not gonna lie. Failed attempts. The Starbucks egg white spinach feta wrap. More like broken taco. Fail. And some raspberry. This is what it's supposed to look like. I mean, I tried. <sighs> It's really very good. Even though it looks kind of... If you have like the big wrap, it would work better. Just looking physically healthy or portraying health through aesthetic reels or posts or talking about how healthy you are, that's not really how I define health. Eating breakfast foods as a snack, post-breakfast dessert, breakfast for dinner, dinner for lunch, lunch for snacks, eating when no one else is, eating flexibly and randomly and rule-free. Healthy is when I have enough energy to achieve my goals, goals outside of how my body looks, goals outside of the gym. I've never told you guys to live the same way I do or eat how I do or believe the same things I do. So I have to stop thinking I have to live the way everyone else wants me to live too. After reading and overthinking the comments about me not holding myself accountable for my relationship with food or making excuses to eat whatever I want, one word came to mind, restriction. Restricting means reducing or eliminating food items or food groups from your diet. Of course, if you're allergic to peanuts, you're not gonna be eating half a jar of peanut butter every day like me. There's also food sensitivities, religious practices, food preferences, diets, or maybe you're just a picky eater. Food restrictions, as you can see, come in all shapes and sizes biologically. We're hungry, we eat, and we're full. But personally, I found that my stomach can be full, but my mind can still be hungry. Restrictive thoughts make me hungry. And studies have even proven that just thinking about restricting can lead to overeating and binging. Ooh, For a long time, I thought I was in a really good place with food. No more food rules, no dieting. I was physically eating quote unquote whatever I wanted, but mentally and emotionally, I wasn't. Wow. Hot. Mm. I wasn't fully giving myself unconditional permission to enjoy it. It is 12. I'm hungry. I ate all the foods, all the ones that I used to label unhealthy or bad, but eating these foods still came with constant guilt, shame, and judgment. I can physically be eating the dessert, but if mentally I'm worried the entire time, or even just a little bit, about how the cake is gonna affect my weight, or how many bites I'm allowed to take, whether or not I can eat dessert tomorrow, mentally, I didn't let myself have that cake. <laughs> so random. Look at that one running. <laughs> I eat the way I do, whenever I want, however much I want, whether it's broccoli or peanut butter or late night banana bread slices, because I feel the freest around food when my mind isn't restricted. Oh my god, look how thick this is. Food can stop being so complicated and exhausting and controlling when I stop trying to control it. Mental restriction for me is the difference between choosing a salad because I want to and because I think I have to. There's a difference between stopping when I'm satisfied or because I think I've had three bites too many of the ice cream. A very there's a difference between eating a lot of food at night because I'm listening to my body and eating a lot because I'm telling myself I won't be allowed to eat these foods tomorrow. Mental restriction can sound like, I shouldn't be eating this, I should have had more self-control, I can't have any more after this bite. We know we always want more of what we can't have. It's like my mind telling my body, hey, you're not gonna be able to eat this again. So anticipate restriction. And so you might as well eat it all right now. <laughs> Something I still do is list out the sneaky food rules. Even just the little ones, negative body image thoughts, or diet mentality that pops up sometimes. And I try to prove them wrong. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's ridiculous. Grew up being told that eating past 8 wasn't good for me. Even if I was hungry, I should wait until breakfast. Why are we letting the time decide whether my body's telling the truth or not? The clock in my body is way more accurate at telling me the right time to eat than the one on my phone screen. Oh my God. <laughs> Guys, we're in food heaven, it's crazy. I don't even wanna eat it because it's so good. <laughs>
bad things today, therefore I was bad. You're allowed to nourish your body and life with a variety of foods. Like when I think I shouldn't eat these fries because I don't need them. Okay, even if I don't need these fries to survive, it doesn't mean they don't serve a purpose. I've recovered from my embarrassment and it's now time to eat sushi. They're fun, crispy, delicious, and they perfectly complement a pizza or a burger. It satisfies a craving and if I'm eating fries with friends, I don't need to be having a mental freak out about it. That was like croissant. There's a difference between I don't need the fries and I don't want the fries. I don't need is restrictive. I don't want is still allowing yourself to have them. Maybe you're just not feeling them today. See, food isn't the problem. The thoughts are the problem. Instead of saying to yourself, I suck, I don't feel good, I ate more than I was allowed to, how about saying, I'm allowed to eat any amount of any kind of food. And I learned today that my body doesn't feel the best when I eat too much, I don't know, yogurt? Lesson learned. We move on. It's literally perfect. Tomorrow, I will continue to nourish my body and satisfy any other cravings that my body knows it's always allowed to eat all foods. Another belief of mine was more food means more exercise. You don't need to punish your body for enjoying food and enjoying life. I'm not snacking before bed because I'll gain weight. Maybe it's movie night or I'm cramming for a test or just at a sleepover. Your body size or weight doesn't make it a better or worse body. So don't let the idea of your body changing dictate how you live your life and fuel your body. I spilled water everywhere. I spilled water everywhere. Worse, could have been worse. Could have been all over the camera. Love that for me. I just can't trust myself. Sometimes I have those weeks where I eat like a six foot four teenage boy who plays competitive basketball and football and hockey and is still growing and still feel like I need more food. Sometimes we're just hungrier. Hormones, stress, sleep, exercise, so many factors. Let your hunger be and let yourself feed that hunger. I've been introduced to many versions of Hungry Linda and I'd like to introduce you to them. The ravenous Linda with no off switch. She used to come out whenever I got into that I can only eat healthy mindset or when I just didn't listen to my cravings on purpose, if we wake up and tell ourselves, today I will not eat the peanut butter off limits, off limits, no, 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 whether it's in 12 hours, one week, three months, personally, I always ended up finding myself with a peanut butter jar and not just a spoonful will be consumed. Excitement level high. Cheers. Feels like old time. If your body thinks this is the only time you're going to be allowed to eat your favorite foods, of course you're going to feel out of control. This hungry Linda had to reevaluate how she evaluated her worth and her body. Mm -hmm. Emotional eating, Linda. A comforting meal is exactly what I need on the tough days. I know it's not a fix or a cure, but I find that emotional eating is an opportunity for me to learn more about my body and myself and my feelings. And allowing myself to emotionally eat has helped me gain a better relationship with food because it makes me ask why. Okay, wow. I saw this Instagram reel. Whoa. Just bring some to my mom. Let me try some of this. Oh. Wow. Okay. Maybe a hot if you don't get Halo Top, it is on sale and cold lit spoon. Honestly, it's kind of fire. The busy be hungry, Linda, which is on the very, very rare occasion when food is the last thing on my mind. It's like on an exam day or after a 16 hour shift. So I basically turn into that little kid that just came back from a day at school who runs straight to the snack cabinet and demolishes a family pack of chips. This just shows the importance of properly fueling throughout the day and, you know, packing snacks. Sometimes life gets busy and we prioritize other things other than eating full, balanced, nutritionally dense meals. Some days I do just eat seven protein bars and while that's not ideal, I don't do it every day. And it also shows shows me how far I've come. That my life doesn't revolve around food or my next meal anymore. Sometimes it is just about eating to keep me full until my next class. And while that may lead to me being hungrier than my body would like to be at certain times, like at 1 a.m., I know after I fall back into a normal routine, my body and my eating habits will follow. I trust my body. I trust my hunger. This is stress-free eating for me. This is food freedom for me. The best part of a peanut butter jar. The entire peanut butter jar journey, from the minute you open it, we scoop bread and spoonful to the end. That's so beautiful. I can't wait to get to the bottom where there's like all of this peanut butter. And that's why I am a big midnight snacker. Why I let my body fluctuate. Why I add peanut butter to almost everything. Why when I can't stop thinking about a food, even if I'm not physically hungry, I honor my mental hunger. Go ahead, call it an excuse or laziness, but I call it health 
freedom, and trusting my body. Delicious, nutritious. Don't let me tell you again, air fried broccoli. You know what, I'm gonna keep saying it. This is the best way to eat broccoli. I embrace weight gain because that weight allows me to live freer, fuller, without physical or mental restrictions. Physically gaining weight on my body has been the smallest thing gained. I've gained knowledge about my body. Ice cream dates with mother's son. Not just looking and drooling at the baked goods at the coffee shops, but buying them and eating them. Never measuring my peanut butter things that I've gained that actually matter. And like, how empowering is it to not want to shrink anymore, but to grow? This may be weird, but I eat all the foods that diet culture ruined for me. Not just the ones that I restricted, but also the foods that I associated with restrictive diets, like diet foods. This may potentially be extremely controversial, but I kind of gave them a second chance to maybe reassociate them with a new memory or meal, or reaffirm that yes, I do heavily dislike plain rice cakes and plain Greek yogurt and peanut butter powder. For example, I revisited my old nemesis, the rice cake. Except instead of plain flavorless styrofoam, I now eat the caramel ones topped with peanut butter and banana and cinnamon and chocolate chips. Absolutely amazing, can't get enough. I also reached out to plain Greek yogurt. I now add protein powder loaded with fruit and granola and nut butter. I just wanted to show you guys this. It's to protect. Why do I love that a little too much? Today's going so well. I'm so excited to be here. I don't know what real life is. I love that I can revamp and reframe and recreate the foods that were part of my past into new meals and memories that add to my life now instead of take away from it. It's kind of beautiful if you think about it. Question. Do you eat to live or do you live to eat? I think we can all guess which one of those I fall under. Food is simply life, but yes, there is a but. Being able to lean on other things when life gets stressful or overwhelming, even though a big bowl of peanut buttery protein notes does calm me down, has helped me maintain my healthy relationship with food. By discovering other interests, outlets, ways you like to spend your time and your energy, like hiking with my mom or baking for my family, reading, learning, editing, meeting you guys, randomly dancing in my basement. Finding joy in other parts of life shows me that a healthy relationship relationship with food gives me healthier relationships and fuller experiences in all the other parts of my life too. Remember, eating is only one aspect of life. One single aspect. We weren't put on this planet to overthink, stress, micromanage our food and weight and exercise 24-7. There are too many goals to pursue, places to go, people to meet, art to create, croissants to be consumed, birthdays and people and love to be celebrated, to be wasting our precious time fixated and stuck on this one single aspect of life. And I've already learned the hard way that a restricted relationship with food leads to a restricted life. And that's not a life I want to live in. I'm still gonna have my moments, my days, and think some mean things about my body, but those days aren't the majority of my days anymore. They don't control me or define me, and instead I've learned to control them, and that I get to define me. I think that's maybe what I have to do with the comments I get too. No matter how thick of skin I grow, hate will never not hurt. But I know that I can get to a place where I no longer let them define me. Maybe the secret to self-confidence isn't just to stop caring about what other people think. Maybe it's to start caring more about what you think. Maybe it's making your own opinion of you more important than anyone else's. The other day my friends asked me why I ate so healthy and why I crave vegetables and why I bring fruit and oats with me to sleepovers. It's genuinely because I have an oatmeal and fruit addiction and it's just what my taste buds are craving most days, I'm not even kidding. But before, the answer would be because I needed to be in control. It used to be the right way to eat, the only way I could eat because I needed to eat healthy. And seriously, healthy was the last thing that I was. Korean spicy fried chicken. I bring fruit to sleepovers and like piling on the veggies because I finally found what health feels like for me. It feels like friendship around the dinner table or a second round of drinks and being able to say no to a third drink because I know my body and I'm not going to be able to wake up or function the next day. It feels like energy to put towards you too. The freedom to say yes when someone feeds me a bite of their dessert or a bowl of cereal at 2am or spontaneous chicken burgers. Oh. Cindy. <laughs> Okay, I don't really care. I just wanted to show you. I know you get so good. Why do you get so excited? It feels like loving food with my whole life without it taking over my life. I don't have this health oh balance, normal so eating good. thing down and perfected, and I'm not mad about it. I'm learning that it's okay to mess up day to day, week to week, video to video. Honestly, that's how we grow. So my patterns, hunger, mindset, diets, routines, opinions may change because I'm growing and changing too. Health isn't defined by a set of rules or a list of food or any specific way to live. Instead, you get to define what health means to you as you continue to live. I 
think that's kind of cool, and it makes me really excited to see where this foodie journey is going to take me. I mean, where it's going to take us. <laughs> <laughs>